Welcome to ITK Barcamp and our series on C++ programming. Today we are going to continue our introduction to the use of macros in C++ and this time we are going to illustrate how to use macros as a way of controlling a conditional compilation of code. Let's just start with an example then. Um, There are typical lines for being able to print uh, messages to the, screen, to the screen. The typical main function, we know that it's going to return an integer value and we need the body of the function. And we can address the controversy of whether the most popular sport is football or soccer in the world. This will be the message that you will print in certain countries, and this is the message that you will print in other countries. And the way we are going to control whether we use one or the other message is by introducing a conditional um, compilation flag. So we introduce the preprocessor command if def here. And if def is looking for whether a particular macro symbol has been defined or not. Uh, let's call that symbol uh, you are in the US. Notice what we are using underscores is a value to use underscores as part of the name of a macro. And this um, preprocessor pre statement, the if dev, uh, also has uh, the option of using the else and in if the way you will you will use. Uh, conditionals in most languages. So what this means is that if this macro happens to be defined by the time the compiler look at this, co this code, then these lines of code, this particular line of code, number seven, would be introduced in the final code. Uh, otherwise, if this macro is not defined, then this will be the line that will be used in the code. All right, notice that so far we have not defined the macro here. We could have done it at the, at the beginning of the program by using the define symbol this way. Um, it's a valid way of doing it. It's probably not as interesting as the other uses that we're going to show in a minute. Uh, because in this case, then the, um, if you knew about the definition of the macro at this level of the code, you could have used it already as part of the logic. So this is valid code, but it's not the most interesting use. Let's see how this is used from the outside. So let's. Uh, Grab this, I record it, and invoke the compiler. Uh, we tell the compiler to put the executable in a file called macro example2, and we execute macro example2. And what it tells us is that soccer is the most popular sport because um, we have not defined the symbol. So you are not in the US, this symbol uh, has not been defined, and therefore this is the line that the compiler will use. Now let's repeat that compilation, but this time you're going to pass the definition of the symbol. We can do this by writing um, in the command line, in the instructions for the compiler. Um, with the dash D option, we are defining a macro symbol. Okay, by doing this, now when we execute that same executable, uh, we get the other line of code. So, football, because this time, by the time the compiler finds this particular section of the code, uh, this macro has been defined and therefore it selects this piece of the code. You probably can tell already that one of the challenges of doing, um, of using macros as a conditional compilation is that you may end up with pieces of code that are rarely compiled and maybe rarely tested. So those sections of the code tend to accumulate bugs or become out of um, date with the rest of the code base. If you happen to use conditional compilations in your code, you have to make sure that you're exercising um, both of those options, uh, either by having uh, a testing suite that exercises each one of the options. Um, this is really important because then you, you can ensure that the code coverage of 
and the code base will be high and those bugs that could be hiding in the places that are rarely compiled uh, will be exposed more regularly. Okay, another way to define the symbol, notice that uh, in this particular example we define the symbol by passing it to the compiler uh, in the command line. Instead of doing that we can uh, put it in a header file and then include the header file in the code. Let's call this file macro, macro definitions. And we write this file. Typically, this type of header files will be uh, generated by a configuration step. So instead of being written directly by developers, uh, normally that definition will have um, will be the result of configuring the code base just before compilation, just before building your project. Now let's verify the content of our file. We have that the symbol is defined, and when we go out and compile the project, this time we don't need the definition here. We can uh, just do this, and when we run the code. Uh, we see that football, football is the most popular sport because in our header file we have the symbol defined. Let's change that now and we undefine the symbol. So this is the way of making sure that by the time the compiler look at the code this macro will not be defined. We compile again and we execute and this time we got, uh, of course, the alternative line. So, uh, because when we look at the code, not this one, the other one. For example, two. Um, the macro is not defined, and therefore we land in the alternative line. Okay, so this is an illustration of how to use macros as a way of um, driving conditional compilation of code. Thank you for listening.